Hey, good morning everybody and welcome to the vlog. I hope the start of your day is amazing. I know my start of my day is gonna be pretty amazing because I've got my girl Ivy there and she already smells what's coming. That's right, pig number two is on its way and uh, we're gonna go ahead and see if she wants another big meal because the last one went so well. I have to be careful because I have to climb in the cage. Whew. I tell you what, it's gonna be a little sketchy, guys. Come on, big mama. There you go, baby. There you go, come on. Whoa, here she comes, here she comes. Here she comes, there you go. There you go, big girl. Come on, big girl. So crazy enough, guys, she seems super interested in it, but normally she strikes out super aggressively. But you can see right now, she's smelling. So what I think I'm gonna do is just back away and see if she's just gonna climb up to it and eat it. Now, it's not unusual for animals to do this, but uh, it's unusual for her, because she's such a, an aggressive feeder. So let's just go ahead and see. I think she's gonna go for it. I mean, she's definitely looking, she's smelling. She seems really interested. So I'm just gonna back away, guys. Give her some time and we'll come back to it, okay? Well, we have to feed everything else out at the Reptarium as well. So I'm gonna go ahead and start with my girl, Perdita. Looks like she is ready for food for sure. Come on, girl. Come on, sweetheart, she's such a good, whoa! Come on, girl, not the camera. Okay, <laughs> she's a little fired up, that's for sure. What a beautiful snake, and again, it's feeding day here at the Reptarium. I hope that you guys are enjoying the feeding. We have a lot of snakes to feed, so let's just keep rocking. And it's so crazy that Snaz has become such a great feeding snake. You gotta remember, he went about eight months without food when he was here, and uh, it's just interesting how snakes are. That's why when you're keeping snakes as pets, a lot of times people get all stressed out because their snake might not eat for a week or two. You have to always realize, like, why is it not eating, right? If there's an issue, yeah, then it's a problem. But some snakes just go on food strikes, you know? Obviously, ball pythons are really notorious for sometimes feeding for eight months and then going three or four months without. As a Matter of fact, if you have a ball python that's about a year old, oftentimes they go on what we call a thousand gram or one year old wall strike. You know, that basically they just go off of food for a period of time. Sometimes it can be a few weeks, sometimes it can be a few months, no big deal. Same thing with Snaz here. We know he's a male Burmese, he's about seven years old. It's not gonna be that uncommon for him to go off of food every now and then. Eight months was a long time, but now look at he's turned on and he is crushing food. I'm gonna try to give Casper a meal, but I'll be honest with you, when I started thawing rodents out, I didn't notice that he's just going a little bit cloudy, which means he's just in the start of a shed. I'm gonna try to give it to him anyways. You can see he's kind of not so interested right now. He's a little bit of smell, a little bit of looking, but I'm not sure if he's gonna wanna take it or not. I'll just give him a little bit of a try. Nope, and that's the thing, that snakes, once they start to go into shed, they start to get a little blue, they don't really want to eat. And there's a couple reasons for that. Number one, they can't see real well, so they're a little bit more insecure about feeding. Number two, remember, at the end of a shed cycle, their skin is kind of stretched to the biggest ability. That's why they're going through that shed, to get that new skin to try to stretch again, right? So obviously, they're in that position where like, hey, dad, I don't want to stretch my skin any further. Most of the time, I don't even offer when an animal is just starting to go opaque, but uh, I thought out the food, and now I just have to give something melts an extra rabbit. Lori, so with everything going so crazy with like the expansion stuff, how are you hanging in there? Well, I'm hanging in there like I always do. Like this isn't my first rodeo with this kind of crazy stuff. So I think overall things are going pretty smooth. I, I really don't have any complaints. Just a lot of moving parts, I guess, right? Like, oh yeah. Just like everything's constantly like you got to go for the permits or electric or whatever. So. Absolutely. That, and that's how it always is. There's always like A, B, C, and then back to 1A and then back to whatever. And it's uh, like I said, it's all pretty much going par for the course. We haven't had any setbacks, yeah. knock on wood. I wouldn't say he's a worst case scenario kind of guy, but like he worries about a lot of stuff. Me, like I'm the opposite. Like, you know, I'll think worst case scenario to be prepared for things, but not in a worry standpoint. Yeah, until I have to worry, uh, why worry? We're good, everything's good, and hopefully it just stays the course. How you doing, bro? Getting some little babies packed up. Really Ooh. sad. Really Anybody sad. anyone's name on there? No, no one's name usually. It's just like a uh, order number. So, you know, Beth has all the names. I'll put the order number on there. Put obviously what the snake is on here, the sex. And uh, she kind of goes from there and knows all the names. So whoever's getting this beautiful albino Nelson's milk snake and your order number is 18474, congratulations. There it is right there. That's a nice one.
finally took it. I thought she would. She seemed really interested. In it. Weird that she didn't strike it this time. But as soon as I put it in there, she was sniffing it, sniffing it. Took her a little while. We weren't sure what exactly she was doing, but she ended up taking it. So let's hope she's gonna crush this meal. All right, Eric, so uh, how is it working with your significant other? I don't want to sound too cheesy, but I personally absolutely love it. I mean, Mary is like my best friend. I love her so much. Terrible, <laughs> but I still love him. <laughs> Every day that we get to work together, it's just like that glue that bonds us together gets harder and harder and harder. I might lose my mind if I have to go another week working down here with him. Things are going so good down here just with like with the two of us tag team and everything. The Unstoppable Chambers team. He's always on his phone all the time and really easily distracted. What's up, dude? No, I'm not busy. What, what'd you say? <laughs> dude, I know I like turtles. I like turtles. <laughs> <laughs> All right, God bless, love you, bye. So sorry, so sorry. So the nice part about working with Mary, not only is she my wife, she's my best friend. I really miss my best friend in California. I wake up, me and Mary get ready. We both drive that long 40 minutes to work together, share our breakfast, and then of course, we're working all day together. We usually argue about, you know, what to get for lunch. And then I'm just with her for the rest of the day, our drive home, once we get home. Unless I'm taking a number two, she's right there beside me. Then I have to leave here and drive in the car with him 40 minutes home. Can't complain about my day because he's kind of the one I want to complain about. I'm so excited for the future because the more and more we work together, the better we're going to be as a team. And, you know, we can almost finish each other's sentences. I'm pretty sure she said it. And just to kind of explain the food strategy with Ivy as she's eating here is basically we've been feeding her one big meal much like they eat in the wild. Again they're gonna eat really large meals in the wild but we've been doing that maybe every six to eight weeks and then all the other weeks we've been going with small like rabbits or little tiny pigs that are three or four pounds and when we feed her small meals we're maybe every seven to ten days. When she's a big meal like she's eating today she probably won't eat again for two two and a half weeks or so like that as she digests and pushes that through, but they put so much of that food into growth. They got you, bro? I thought it. I thought it was gonna get me. I was walking past. Obviously, I know there's not rattlesnakes, but I just saw a snake right there. I'm like, what the heck? <laughs> Obviously, Ivy is crushing a big meal right now. We're about to feed pickles. Come on, pickles. Come on, bud. Come on, all the way over here. Whoa, she, she came out of nowhere. Grab that thing, holy moly. I wasn't expecting that. But you have to get to know each animal, right? So Pickles gets like a smaller, medium rat, right? If you fed a big meal to something like Pickles or the Emerald Tree Ball, it could be a major issue, right? So you gotta know the size. Not every animal wants big meals or can actually eat big meals, right? An animal like this could actually get bound up. It can regurgitate, all kinds of stuff. You gotta remember, green tree pythons mainly eat birds, number one. And number two, they don't move a lot. So their metabolism isn't constantly going like crazy because they're not moving around and moving food through them. So a lot of times people will say like don't feed a green tree python or an emerald tree ball until after they poop and that oftentimes is the case. Also you don't want really large meals, you always want to be on the small meal side. So again it's just getting to know each animal before you start feeding it and what meal size each animal should actually have. Honey, the pie ball ball pipeline certainly is getting large. Come on, girl. Want some food? Come on, baby. There she is. Ooh, that's a good strike. Sunrise is definitely ready. As soon as she starts to smell the food, she is on it. I mean, I tell you what, that is one impressive snake right there. Come on, little monkey. And she just shed out, so she is definitely ready for food. There she goes, just like that. And it's an interesting thing when it comes to sunrises because, you know, she's about nine and a half foot right now, about 40 pounds. And 
And the fact is, is that she can get, you know, 17, 18 foot and 150 pounds, really. And it's a bummer, because right now she's really at that size where, you know, you can take her out. Even kids can handle her, even if she's a little bit heavy. But as she gets bigger, it's going to be harder for kids to hold her. So it's a tough thing, you know. I want to continue to feed her. I want her to continue to grow. But I'm a little bummed that she's starting to get to that size where it's getting a little bit difficult to hold. And uh, here in another six, eight months from now, it's going to take two kids to hold her. But she is looking amazing. Okay, we've got crested gecko eggs and cave gecko eggs. Our crested eggs are from honey. Well, these guys don't dig very deep, so they're just right there. Right under the soil. Oh, they look good too. Yep. Nice and healthy, very cool. It's gonna right on here, so I know which egg is which since I'm incubating them all in like a little container together. This way I can also tell what is the top of the egg because once one hatches out, they like to spin all the eggs around. <laughs> And now is it similar to like snakes and stuff where like if it's flipped upside down that the, the animal can drown or? It could, it's a lot less likely to uh, drown though. They'll, there's still a great chance that it's gonna hatch it even if it gets rolled around. They don't attach themselves to the side of the egg the same way that snakes do. And then we got cave geckos, right? Yeah. Those are some of my favorite. It's very cool, it's like a death metal leopard gecko. So we've got, this is the male here. This is one of our females. This is our original female actually, because we only started out with a pair of these guys. So this is her daughter actually. Get out. That's so cool. Depends. So those mm. look really nice and healthy. Very nice. And then we got one more set. Set these down for a second. Then right there. Oh, look at that. Perfect. All good eggs. Yep. They all look good. Awesome, thank so we you. We already got eight. We're gonna have a lot of cave geckos this year. <laughs> awesome. Even with just the few females that we've got. Cause I think we only have five females breeding, but. Well, I know, cause it's crazy. I went downstairs before and there's just the eggs are stacking up from yeah. all the New Caledonia and these guys too, right? Yep, everything's getting going on uh, our different, like our miscellaneous gecko species. Obviously this is a large meal and a lot of people think that snakes will actually dislocate their jaws in order to fit around a meal this size. But the truth is they just have ligaments that stretch out. So yeah, they can separate their jaws a lot, but they're always connected. And as they kind of undulate, they're using that muscle to pull it right through the body. And that distension of scales is just that muscle that's pulling it through. Again, an anaconda this size like Ivy here in the wild are gonna probably eat capybara. They're even larger than this pig right here, but it's still an amazing sight. And Ivy is definitely making quick work of this big pig right here. She is definitely turned on, which is absolutely incredible. And the whole idea is, is again, she's gonna get literally a 10 foot by 10 foot by floor to ceiling cage that has a big water feature in it. She's gonna get big. We can't wait till Ivy is, you know, 16, 17 foot, 200 plus pounds. She is definitely gonna be one of the showstoppers here. So again, we don't wanna overfeed her by any stretch, but this is a pretty normal meal for something like this, what they would eat in the wild. Her growth is pretty amazing. We want her to get big, but we wanna also be responsible with that. This meal, again, is 15 plus pounds. Last time she only defecated less than a pound. Now I realize there's a lot of water weight and stuff like that, but we also saw that she grew 10 pounds just within the last four months. So that means she pretty much 20%ed her size just in a four month window. Again, I don't expect that growth to continue, but I can definitely see her being 100 plus pounds this time next year. <laughs> look at the lump in that girl right there. You know, honestly, it doesn't look that bad. You know, I mean, I think the first time we fed her a pig, it seemed like it was much bigger, but uh, she seems to have really taken it down. And by the way, it took her less than two hours. Last time it was like six or seven hours or something like that. So she's definitely getting big. As a matter of fact, it is crazy to think of how big she's getting. I was just looking back and seeing how much growth she actually put on since we got her. She is a gorgeous animal. And again, she's in shed, that freaking slow tongue movement, the color, the pattern on this animal. I am over the moon. I mean, this is absolutely an incredible animal. I can't wait to get her home. You can only imagine when she digests this. We'll have to get her back on the scale within the next week or so. But Ivy, you look absolutely incredible, girl. Come on, up here, up here, up here. There you go, buddy. Definitely getting much better. I mean, I'll be honest with you. Still a little bit cantankerous, I'm not gonna lie, but he's pretty good. As a matter of fact, this weekend coming up here, when we open up the Reptarium, I'm gonna bring him out, give him a little time to be out and kind of mess around. As a matter of fact, I might keep him out all day, but uh, doing really well. Again, submitting a little bit more. I think we got him. I think within the next month or two, I'll be swimming in this pond again. 
definitely blown away every time Ivy takes a big meal like that. If you enjoyed this one, here's the last time and the first time she ate a really big pig. If you enjoyed the feeding, here's the entire feeding playlist. You can roll through those. If you don't mind, over here, you can hit that subscribe button. Turn the post notification on so you know when I upload a video. Have a wonderful day and be kind to someone, I promise. I'll see you guys tomorrow.